oblique. Oblique projection is the easiest to create pictorial drawing method. The bad part, the trade-off, the con, is that it's the least realistic when it comes to results. Okay, but it is, serves a purpose and it's a quick way to get something that looks 3D on a piece of paper. The technique is really simple. I want to draw a cube, right? Very simple shape. So I draw a square. I draw basically the front view of my object. And then to create the illusion of depth, I'm going to draw some lines from the corners back at 45 degrees. Here, here, and here. I'm going to make sure all those lines are the same length. And then once I've got them all the same length, I will connect the dots corner to corner and corner to corner. And then what we've created is a view that shows the front and the top and the right all at the same time. Okay, and when we're done, we darken everything in and we've got our little oblique sketch. Now, the trade-off. Go, I challenge you to go find something square in your house, maybe a child's block or a package or something. Uh, go find something that's a cube, hold it in your hand, and tell me how do you have to position it in order to see it as a square in the front and then also see uh, the top and the side like this. See the fact is you can't. There, there's no way to hold this object so that it appears this way. So while it looks 3D, it's not super realistic. Okay, my little uh, old style flash camera here. Again, uh, this is not super realistic, okay? But you get the idea and you can get a sense of depth and thickness um, and the fact that this bumps out a little bit, right? And that the uh, flash not only pops up, but it also goes back because it's an easy thing to draw. Oblique is easy to draw. So any of the shapes that you wanted to take from what we've drawn already, Want to oblique them you just draw that front view you go back at 45 degrees and then we figure out how far back we want to go here's a little drawing an oblique drawing of a file cabinet for large format drawings for blueprints basically it's a blueprint cabinet so again i can see the front and the top and the side and uh, it looks fine you know people that look at this will know exactly what we're talking about. It doesn't have a front view and a separate top view and a separate right side view. It's all thrown together. And again, it doesn't look super realistic, but it gets the message across. So why is oblique so unrealistic? Well, the problem is that our eyes don't see things in oblique. And here's our example. Uh, in perspective, the train tracks look like they get smaller as they go farther away from us. Right? They really don't. They really stay the same size, but distance gives them the appearance of being smaller. Well, look at our train tracks in oblique. You see in oblique, the cross members here never get smaller, no matter how far away they go. And that creates some distortion and an unnatural appearance. Okay, so here's our object. If we were holding it in our hand, I want to make an oblique drawing of that. So again, front view. Draw the front, add some 45 degree lines, think about depth. Uh, with holes, how thick is the material? So am I going to see the back of the hole, or is the material so thick you can't see the back? Well, over here, the same amount of depth. I went back here, I drew the hole, and then I drew the circle for the back of the hole, that, that distance back. I see there's actually a little tiny bit of the back of the hole showing. All right, and I get my result over here. As far as the angle, uh, I say use 45 degrees. Now the truth is you could use any angle if you wanted to. You could use 30 or you could use 60, uh, but I think 45 has some advantages and here's what they are. 45 degree angle will give you more or less an equal amount of right side and top exposure. If you go with 30 degrees, the top is lower and squished compared to the side. And if you go with 60, the top is extra large and and uh, in your face compared to the side. So 45 is right between the two and gives us what we're looking for. So I'm gonna say for our class, we're gonna use the 45 degree angle to oblique things. 
Okay, so now take a look at the picture here. Can you identify the system that was used to, to draw this? Is this perspective or is this oblique? And what makes you say that? See, if you said this is perspective, you are correct. All these edges, as they go away from us, they're getting smaller off into the distance. They're going to hit the horizon. And even though I can see the front and the right side and the top, that doesn't make it oblique if the edges recede into the distance. Okay, so we've compared oblique to perspective. Uh, you should know that there are two types of oblique drawing styles. One is called cavalier oblique, full depth, full height, full width. What we have over here is something called cabinet oblique. And it is still full width, it's still full height, but it's cut in half in the depth. So same angle, same measurements on that front view, but what's changed is the depth. And the reason we do that is because the Cavalier Oblique kind of looks distorted and top heavy if we don't. So let me show you an example. We have a drawing done here of a cabinet, like a kitchen base cabinet. This cabinet has been drawn to scale, so uh, the cabinet is two feet wide, it's three feet tall, and it's two feet deep. So these angled lines here are 24 inches deep. Now, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around that, because to me this looks a lot longer than this, doesn't it? Uh, but in fact, these are the sizes of this cabinet. So because it looks so distorted, and because we have so much space up here and over here, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, we're going to cut the depth in half, and it will look less distorted. So that's what we've done here. Uh, cabinet oblique for a cabinet, ha, huh, get it, uh, is still the full width, the two feet, and it's still the full height, the three feet, but what's been cut in half is the depth, so I've only given it one foot of depth, even though it's supposed to have two. And this looks less distorted. Please don't think you only use cabinet oblique when drawing kitchen cabinets, okay? That's just a coincidence in the example I decided to use. Okay, so here's our Cavalier, and here's our cabinet projection. The only thing that we have to uh, be really worried about, I guess, would be is if we're going to draw circles in oblique. Uh, on the front face, a circle is just a circle, nice and easy use a compass right or try to sketch it as accurately as you can if you're making a sketch where it gets crazy is if your circle is in the top or if your circle is on the side so the circle becomes this lopsided ellipse and uh, it is possible to, to create this It's just a little bit of work um, it's probably more effort than it's worth so me if I'm drawing something and it has round elements I'll try to put them in the front <laughs> On, the oblique, on these oblique planes.